What do all three of these have in common? They all require a professional operator who has a thorough understanding of the machine's operating principles and its limitations to ensure the safety of themselves and others. In this program, you will learn the different types of lift trucks, principles of load capacity and the stability triangle, proper pre-operation inspection and safe work practices when refueling or charging batteries. There are a variety of forklifts used in industry. Some trucks handle large loads well, but are unmanageable in tight spaces. Others work well outdoors in rough terrain, but could not be operated in potentially flammable environments. Platform trucks, straddle trucks, order pickers, and side loaders are just some of the many types of forklifts designed to do a specific job. Though they may differ in look and function, the basic operating principles remain the same. Forklifts are categorized by the four types of power sources used. Gasoline, diesel, liquid petroleum, and electrical. These four are broken down further into 11 different classifications, depending on what safeguards and features exist. It is important to know the designation on the truck you work with because it may not be compatible with potentially hazardous atmospheres in your work area. For instance, a truck designated as G is not approved for operation in an atmosphere with flammable dust or vapors, or an enclosed area in which the carbon monoxide from exhaust would exceed established permissible exposure levels. Make sure your truck is approved for its intended use. Modifications to the forklift cannot be made without the authorized approval from the manufacturer. One of the most important facts you need to know about your forklift is how much it can safely lift. The weight is listed as the load capacity on the manufacturer's data plate. The load capacity is not a constant. It is affected by where the load center is, the height you plan to lift the load, and any attachments that might be used. Your forklift works on the same basic mechanical principle as a seesaw, teeter-totter, or any other type of lever. For example, to balance a 12-inch ruler on the top of a pencil, you would have to put the pencil under the midpoint 6 inches. The weight of one coin placed at the end of the ruler would pull it down. To bring it back in balance, the identical weight needs to be placed on the other end. The same is true with a forklift. A forklift has a counterweight which enables it to safely lift and travel with heavy loads. The capacity the forklift is able to lift is determined by the counterweight. If you were to place a second coin on one side of the ruler, you could do two things to balance it again. Add a second coin to the upright side, or move the two coins closer to the pencil. The pencil is the fulcrum point. On the forklift, the front wheels are the fulcrum point. Like the pencil example, the closer the load is moved to this fulcrum point, the more it is able to lift. The farther away the load center, the less it can lift. This is why you must use great care when lifting unbalanced loads. They should be picked up so that the heaviest part of the load is closest to the front wheels. Also, the higher you lift the load, the less stability you have. Again, the weight is farther away from the fulcrum point. Attachments to the forks may also affect the load center. Consult the operator's guide or manufacturer for this information. Never take risks that could tip over the forklift. Never let a coworker stand on the back to add to the counterweight. The counterweight not only enables the forklift to handle heavy quantities of weight, it affects the vehicle's center of gravity. Unlike an automobile, which has four points of suspension, the forklift operates on a three-point suspension. The forklift is suspended on three fixed points, two on the fixed front axle and the center point of the rear. This makes up the stability triangle. The blue dot represents the center of gravity. This is why adherence to proper load handling and smooth operation is essential. When weight is added to the forks, the center of gravity moves forward. When the forks are tilted back slightly, the center of gravity moves back. If the weight is too heavy, or the forks are tilted forward, the center of gravity could move outside the stability triangle and cause the truck and yourself to tip. Being aware of the stability triangle is also important when taking a corner. When the truck turns, 
the center of gravity shifts to the side. If too fast or abrupt, the center of gravity could move outside the stability triangle and cause the forklift to tip. Because a forklift steers with the back wheels and pivots on the front wheels, you need to stay on the inside of corners when turning to allow the rear end room to swing wide. Failure to do so may lead to property damage or an injury to a coworker. The number one forklift accident is a coworker's foot being run over. Always be aware of coworkers in the area and sound your horn when turning blind corners. Never exceed the load capacity of your truck or allow its center of gravity to move outside the stability triangle. In addition to understanding the mechanical principles that make a forklift function, you are responsible for its safe operating condition. A pre-operation inspection of the forklift is required before every shift to identify and correct any possible defects before a mechanical breakdown or accident occurs. The pre-operation inspection should be conducted with a written checklist. It is important that the forklift be maintained in good physical condition. This begins with keeping the forklift free of lint, excess oil, and grease. Walk around the truck and check for any damaged parts or leaks. Check the lift chains for equal tension, broken pins, and wear. Check for loose bolts and cracks in the overhead guard, backrest, and tilt cylinders. Check the tires for cracks and other signs of wear. If the tires are inflatable, make sure the air pressure meets manufacturer's specifications. Make sure all the lights work. Look under the forklift and on the floor for any signs of oil, coolant, or fuel leaks. Check the levels in the brake fluid, the engine oil, hydraulic tank, and the coolant. Start the forklift engine and check all gauges on the dashboard for proper readings. Check the parking brake to make sure it is working. Be sure the steering wheel free play is correct. Check the horn. Step through the controls for the mast and forks to make sure they run smoothly. Check the clutch to make sure it engages properly. And finally, hold the brake down with your foot for 10 seconds. There should be no noticeable drift with the pressure. On an electric forklift, the condition and charge of the battery needs to be checked. Turn the key on to check the discharge indicator. The needle should be in the green area. At the conclusion of the inspection, the checklist should be signed dated and filed in its proper designated place. Since a forklift is used to lift and transport large amounts of material and is an integral part of your facility, its safe operation is essential. Never operate a forklift that does not pass inspection. It will endanger the safety of yourself and co-workers. It should be removed from service immediately until properly repaired. Any vehicle that emits sparks or flames must be removed from service. Only authorized personnel should perform repairs. Refueling, battery charging, and changing LP tanks should only be performed by trained authorized personnel in designated areas. Gas-powered trucks should be refueled outside. When refueling, turn the engine off. No ignition sources are allowed in the area, including cigarettes. When finished, wipe off any spillage and tightly close the cap. Liquid propane is flammable and must be kept away from ignition sources. Safe work practices must be followed due to the potential hazards associated with liquid propane, such as hypothermic burns. Wear eye protection and proper gloves to prevent skin contact with the extremely cold substance when changing the propane tank. Disconnect the hose and holding straps to remove the cylinder. Replace it with a full cylinder in the proper position. Make sure the locking pin engages into the cylinder. Always protect the valve. After connecting the holding straps, tighten the connecting nut. Slowly open the valve all the way. Check to be sure the hose is turned inward and all parts are secure before resuming operation. Battery changing areas must be well ventilated to prevent the buildup of explosive vapors. It must be equipped with a means of flushing or neutralizing any spilled electrolyte. A safety shower and eye wash station should be available. Ignition sources must be kept away at all times. This includes sparks, flames, and burning cigarettes. 
trucks should be properly positioned and brakes applied before attempting to change a battery. A conveyor or overhead hoist must be used to handle the batteries. Keep tools and other metallic objects away from the top of the uncovered batteries. Friction from metal could cause a spark. Follow the safe work practices established at your facility. Do not attempt to refuel, change batteries, or make any repairs to a forklift unless you are authorized. The responsible operator understands the operating principles of the forklift and respects the need to keep it in good working condition. Know the designation of the forklift you are operating and what areas of the facility it may or may not operate in. Know the load capacity and understand the factors that affect it. Perform a pre-operation inspection before each shift and follow proper procedures when refueling or charging batteries. As a professional forklift operator, you can take pride in the care and operation of your machine. By understanding the basic operating principles, you can ensure the safety of yourself and your co-workers. In the busy work environment, you may feel like you're operating at a major airport. Number five, dock plate has been secured and wheels are chalky. You're clear to go on dock seven. Thank you. Number five, proceeding to dock seven. Number three, you'll be holding until number five is clear. Number three is holding. Number eight, you're running parallel with ten, one aisle north. Okay, thanks. I'll give away to ten. But unlike a pilot, you have no one to direct traffic or monitor every action. The responsibility is yours. Being aware of the changing environment while operating a complex piece of machinery is a challenging task. It requires a well-trained professional who takes responsibility for everyone's safety. In this program, you will learn to identify potential operating concerns in your environment, techniques for proper load handling, safe driving skills, and how to interact safely with coworkers. Safe operation of a forklift begins with the operator. You are in a position of great responsibility. A safe operator respects the potential hazards and understands the operation and limitations of the forklift. The true professional respects the working environment and eliminates risk taking. Unsafe operation of a forklift can cause catastrophic accidents. The most recent annual statistics indicate 34,000 injuries nationally that required emergency room treatment as a result of forklift accidents. Forklift accidents are costly in medical bills, insurance, lost wages, and rehabilitation. Numerous accidents result in property damage, including destroyed product, walls, piping, overhead sprinklers, and racks. You can prevent costly accidents at your facility by incorporating safety in every decision you make as a forklift operator. Be aware of adverse operating conditions in your work environment. Even if you work in the same area with the same truck each day, there may be changes that could affect the safety of yourself and coworkers. Contractors making maintenance changes, wet areas due to equipment leaks, changing surface conditions, or overhead repair work. Familiarize yourself with potential hazards in all areas you operate your lift truck. These could include narrow aisleways, high traffic areas, overhead obstructions, surface conditions, additional equipment operated in the area, and temporary situations. Good housekeeping in a facility is essential for safe operation. It is everyone's responsibility. A clean work environment reduces potential problem areas, as a forklift operator, you also have the responsibility to not block fire exits, electrical panels, emergency stop buttons, or aisleways with materials. By being aware of the environmental conditions, you can greatly reduce the chance of an accident occurring. In addition to the environment you operate in, understand the potential hazards of the loads you handle. These hazards may vary from protruding edges to hazardous chemicals. 
Know the chemical characteristics of the substances you are moving. Are they stable, reactive, or flammable? If a flammable drum is punctured, immediately turn off the ignition source and contact the proper personnel at your facility. Before lifting a load, know that it is within the load capacity of your vehicle. Make sure it is properly stacked and secured and that the pallet is in good condition. If you get off the forklift, always lower the forks and set the parking brake. Avoid putting yourself in a position between the forklift and a fixed object. When attempting a lift, the forks should be spread as widely as possible to provide even distribution of weight. Be aware of pinch points when moving the forks. Insert the forks three quarters of the way into the pallet. Too far and you could damage what's on the other side. Too short and the load would be unstable. The center of the supporting crossbar should line up with the center of the load with the forks evenly spread. They should be wide enough so the load does not sag on the side. Tilt the forks back. This shifts the load center closer to the vehicle. Forks tilted forward shift the center of gravity closer to the edge of the stability triangle, increasing the chances of tipping. With an unbalanced load, you can maximize stability by having the heaviest side closer to you. Travel with the load 6 to 10 inches from the ground, just high enough to clear any potential obstacles, yet low enough to keep the truck at its maximum stability. Forklifts become extremely top-heavy when the load is carried high. Keeping the load low is especially important when turning corners to prevent the center of gravity from shifting outside the stability triangle. Remember when the center of gravity shifts outside the stability triangle, the odds of tipping the forklift greatly increase. This is why you should never raise your forks to stack a load until the lift truck is properly positioned. To set a load, line the pallet squarely with its intended location. Stop the lift truck. Raise the pallet to the proper height, about two inches above the surface, and slowly inch forward until it is in place. Allow two to three inches of clearance at the sides and back of each load. Lower the load in place. Level the forks. Sound the horn and slowly back out. Once the forks are clear of any obstruction, stop the lift truck and lower the forks to about six inches off the ground and proceed to your next load. The forks should also be kept low when traveling without a load. This decreases the chances of the forks knocking over materials or damaging property. If a load blocks your vision, travel in reverse. Slow down and always look in the direction of travel. Keep arms, legs, and head inside the confines of the forklift. This includes never reaching through the mast to adjust a load. When negotiating turns, slow down to a safe level and turn in a smooth, sweeping motion at a moderate and even rate. Some areas in which the forklift is operated requires special operating techniques. This includes inclines, loading docks, and railroad tracks. If you're going up or down a ramp, always travel with the load pointing up. Remember to raise the forks enough to prevent scraping an inclined surface. Never attempt to turn on a ramp. When crossing a railroad track, slow down and cross on a diagonal. This minimizes damage to the wheels and prevents the load from shifting. Extreme caution must be used when maneuvering in and out of trailers. Vehicle brakes must be set and both wheels properly chocked. Trailers not coupled to tractors must have fixed jacks as support. As a forklift operator, you have the most to lose if these proper procedures are not followed. You can prevent accidents from occurring by following properly established procedures and communicating with others. Do not rely on others to secure trailers. Always get off the forklift and check to see if the trailer is properly secured. Make sure your load has proper overhead clearance. Inspect the condition of the vehicle. Is lighting adequate? Are there any obstructions such as loose objects? Make sure the floors are in good condition. Ensure that docks are clear of obstructions, including oil spills and water. Rail cars must also be properly secured and inspected before entering. Make sure wheels are properly chocked. Set handbrakes and derailer. Never attempt to open railroad cars with the forks. Use the proper attachment 
or get off the forklift and open the door. Never exceed the rated capacity of the dock plate. Check to see that the dock plate is secured before driving over it. Drive slowly when crossing a dock plate. Always know where the forklift wheels are in relationship to the edge of the dock. Do not make unnecessary maneuvers on the dock. Just travel slowly in and out. A forklift is a versatile and productive machine that must be respected. Do not attempt to use it for something that it is not designed to do. If attachments are used for specific situations, follow manufacturer's recommendations. Remember that attachments will affect the load capacity of your vehicle. The forklift should be parked in its designated area. Anytime the forklift will be out of your sight or will be left unattended at a distance greater than 25 feet, you must lower the forks, place the controls in neutral, turn off the machine, and remove the keys. Never allow an unauthorized person to use the forklift. As a forklift operator, you must always be aware of where co-workers are. 31% of all forklift accidents involve people who work in the area. The cornerstones of safety in the plant are awareness and communication. Maintain complete concentration when operating the forklift. It is your responsibility to let co-workers know of your presence. Sound your horn whenever your visibility is obstructed and when approaching blind spots. Give co-workers the right of way. Most of all, communicate and do not proceed until they are aware of your presence and in clear of harm. Never assume that a co-worker has heard the horn. Do not proceed until they are clear. They may be preoccupied or not aware of the rules. Forklift statistics show many injuries to people whose job description does not ordinarily take them into the plant. Travel only as fast as conditions allow. Even under ideal conditions, it takes a forklift traveling at 10 miles per hour 22 feet to come to a complete stop. The most common accident is a forklift running over a foot. Be aware of people moving in the proximity of the forklift. They may not be familiar with how it operates. Never let someone get between the forklift and a hard surface such as a wall, pillar, or materials. Remember, as a forklift operator, you are not only responsible for your safety, but for that of your coworkers in the area you are operating. Additional safe driving rules to remember include never pass a forklift or any other vehicle when traveling in the same direction. Allow at least three vehicle lengths between forklifts. Do not allow anyone to stand or walk under raised forks. Serious accidents occur when forklift drivers take chances with the full knowledge of the possible consequences. Giving a coworker a ride, showing off, or any type of horseplay is unacceptable. If someone needs to be lifted to reach stock or material, an approved safety cage with properly equipped guardrails and tow boards must be used. Never lift someone without the proper device and never raise a person that is standing on the forks. Use common sense and give operating a forklift your full concentration. Recognize and respect the potential hazards. Understand the working conditions that exist in your environment before operating the forklift. Practice safe operating techniques. Be aware of coworkers and communicate with them. Safe operation is essential. As a professional forklift operator, you can take pride for the skillful handling of a complex machine in an environment that presents many challenges. There are no traffic controllers to guide your moves. The responsibility is yours. behind forklifts are used for moving items short distances and working in tight areas that conventional forklift trucks are unable to reach. Both the busy environment walk behinds operate in and the task of moving large, sometimes bulky materials presents dangers if safe work practices are not followed. In this program, we will look at safe operating procedures for forklift walk behinds, including pre-operation inspection, an understanding of load capacity, and interacting with the work environment. Walk-behinds, or motorized hand trucks, include a wide variety of vehicles that are designed for specific situations in the workplace. 
Although they vary in size, shape, and function, the principles for safe operation are the same. To prevent unnecessary injuries due to faulty equipment, all forklifts are required to have a pre-operation inspection at the beginning of every shift. Check that the forks are properly secured. Check the lift chains for equal tension, broken pins, and wear. Check the water level in the battery. Look for any leaks of oil and coolant. Check the tires for wear and tear, and clean the safety shield. Never operate a forklift that does not pass inspection. Tag it for repairs to be done by the proper personnel. After the pre-operation check is completed, check the manufacturer's data plate to find the load capacity of your vehicle. The load capacity is the maximum amount of weight on an established load center that the vehicle can safely lift a perfectly balanced load. The load center is the distance from the vertical faces of the forks to the center of the load being handled. The load capacity listed is for optimum conditions. There are many factors that will reduce the weight that can be lifted. As the load center shifts further out, the weight you can safely lift is reduced. As the height of the lift increases, the load capacity is also reduced. Most trucks have full weight capacity up to a certain height and are downrated above that height. This information is also found on the manufacturer's data plate. Before lifting the load, spread the forks as wide as the pallet allows. The forks should be inserted all the way into the pallet before lifting. This gives you a stable load and prevents damage to the pallet. Once the load is stable and meets load capacity requirements, you can proceed with care. Never move any faster than your normal walking pace. Maintain a distance of at least three truck lengths from other vehicles. Avoid sudden stops and turns that will shift the weight of the load. Always travel with your load low to increase the stability of your truck. When pushing the walkie forward, stand directly behind it with both hands on the grips of the control handle. Remember, the truck pivots at the load wheels. Compensate for the swing of the power unit when turning corners. When pulling the walkie, stand off to the side ahead of the truck's power unit. Keep your feet clear of the truck frame at all times. The proper foot protection is required for all walk-behind operators. 22% of all forklift accidents involve the feet. If you have to travel up or down a ramp, always have the load pointed downward. Keep the wheels straight. Never turn on grades, ramps, or inclines. Remember that you're working in an environment that combines heavy equipment with pedestrians. Approach all intersections with caution. Honk your horn to warn others of your presence. Always yield to pedestrians. And remember the forklift to your right has the right of way. Don't pass other vehicles at intersections. Park your walkie only in a designated area. Lower the forks and remove the key from the ignition. Never let others operate your walkie unless they are authorized. And never give a coworker a ride on the forks. A walk-behind forklift truck is an important tool for material handling. If handled improperly, they have the potential not only for property damage, but personal injury to yourself or a coworker. Perform a pre-operation inspection before use. Know the load capacity and the factors that affect it. Operate smoothly and proceed with caution.